Welcome to Coffee with Viking. I am Mike. Cheers. And I hope you're all having a wonderful morning. Today's devotion, Enduring Humility, Micah 6 8. He has shown you, O mortal, what is good. And what does the Lord require of you? To act justly, and to love mercy, and to walk humbly with your God. Charles, Schert, Charles Schultz's first Peanuts cartoon strip was published on this day in 1950. Although Schultz never liked the name of the strip, his humorous depictions of the humble and often humbled Charlie Brown continue to resonate with readers. When the prophet Micah summarizes what God desires from those who follow him, he mentions three specific behaviors, doing the right thing in every business and personal transaction, extending mercy to those who need it, and demonstrating humility. Perhaps Micah's deep compassion for the broken and disenfranchised made it easy for him to mention the importance of humility. Micah 4, 6. In that day, saith the Lord, will I assemble her that halteth, and I will gather her that is driven out, and her that I have afflicted. In a media-saturated culture where screenagers reverence, their rights, humility is often replaced with a world view philosopher, philosopher with a world view philosophers call meism, or as I like to call it, the me, me, me world. Like the Peanuts cartoons that often opposed egocentrism, Micah reminds us that God's directives are dishonored in a worldview in which humility itself has been humbled to the point of insignificance. There will likely be at least one moment today when you will have to choose between your rights and humility, between what benefits you and what blesses another person. When that moment appears, remember Micah's counsel that our self-promoting sacrifices mean little to God and practice enduring humility. Micah chapter 6, 6 and 7 Wherewith shall I come before the Lord and bow myself before the high God? Shall I come before him with burnt offerings, with calves of a year old? Will the Lord be pleased with thousands of rams or with ten thousands of rivers of oil? Shall I give my firstborn for my transgression, the fruit of my body for the sin of my soul? In chapter 8, he has shewed thee, O man, what is good, and what doth the Lord require of thee, but to do justly, and to love mercy, and to walk humbly 
with thy God. Chapter 9. The Lord, the Lord's voice crieth unto the city, and the man of wisdom shall see thy name. Hear ye the rod, and who hath appointed it? What God is wanting from us is from us to put him above ourselves and humble ourselves. Father, help me to walk humbly with you and to pursue another's benefits more than my own. It's like the two greatest commandments that Jesus gave us. Put God above all else and love others as we love ourselves. And he wants us to humble ourselves and to put him and others above us to humble ourselves to a selfish and broken world and not fall into that selfish trap. Today's message was about being humbled because in this world humbling ourselves is not something many people think about anymore. It's all about me, 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 I want, I need, I'm going to do this, this is going to benefit me, whether, whether it hurts someone else or not, as long as I get through it, you know. But when we humble ourselves and we think, is this choice going to affect someone else? Is this choice going to look bad to God? Is he going to look down on this and see that we put ourselves above anyone else and didn't even think whether or not it was going to hurt someone else. But when we humble ourselves, we see the effects of our choices before we make them. And we make them based on what we are seeing in our minds. And when we put our own selves, when we go in our heads and put our own selves in someone else's shoes and see how we would like the effects of that choice that is humbling ourselves because we are seeing in our own minds someone else's reaction through our own self how we would react to it. Stay blessed. Stay caffeinated. Much love.